welcome back. I decided to get outside and get some of this beautiful weather here. I'm at the Smart Garden here in Rochester. Kelly and Tom are here, master gardeners here who have been maintaining the gardens, not just here, but it seems like you're, you're everywhere in Rochester. <laughs> Ma master gardeners try to be everywhere, actually, <laughs> yes. We, we are county representatives, so we have a very broad range of gardens that we work on throughout the county, from everywhere out west at the Oxbow Park Zolman Zoo to the Smart Garden here at RCTC Hind Center, and we share maintenance with the Rochester Garden and Flower Club here as well. Yeah. So there's 120 of us here in Olmsted County. So we have a lot of master gardener volunteers. We have a team that Kelly and I aren't really directly working on this all the time, but we have a team that that really takes care of this place. So if someone wanted to become a master gardener, is there a program they have to go through a training or? Oh yeah, we have a wonderful wonderful program so much learning is involved it, and it's all online now which is wonderful and you can get your application in we're accepting applications until october 1st that's our deadline and we've got about six or seven applications in right now i think tom and usually we get about 20 to 25 and it's just a really neat way for you to give back to your community learn about horticulture do some educational outreach and yeah feel really good about the work you're doing yeah, it's not just uh, putting a badge on and whatever. You you go through basically a college course. Oh, you do. Okay. And then you then you work with hopefully a mentor, and then you get a lot of exposure to our projects that we run here. And uh, you know we kind of identified them as a class of interns, so they'll be the class of 2024 that we will have next year. So. Are there any other areas that you're maintaining besides the Smart Garden? I know you said the Oxford the Zoo, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. then you have uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. There's a park over there you're maintaining. It's mostly food oriented, or is it yes, just? Yes, that's actually um, one of our collaborations with Rochester City Parks and Forestry. So that is a collaboration with a lot of partners that we started back in 2020 during the pandemic. It feeds a lot of people, but we've also got 315 square feet of pollinator beds around it. So we teach about how pollinators are so important to our food system. I've taught local food 101 classes there, and it's just a great, great way to teach people about, about food, local food systems. And then we get a lot of visitors who have come off the frolfing course and, you know, very interested in what, what is this place? And usually people are pretty jazzed about it when they find out about the garden. You know, what I was thinking is that this garden has a lot of things going on um, as far as, I know we mentioned medicinal stuff is going on here, mm -hmm. um, therapeutic. Mm -hmm. uh, what does SMART stand for? I know we were going through yeah. it. <laughs> so it's sustainable, medicinal, as you mentioned, uh, artistic. Um, Resourceful. Resourceful. Resourceful is the one that's always a tough one for us. And then yeah. the last one is therapeutic. 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 Okay, so we're going to go through each one of those alphabets here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. good. Yeah. You know, good. so where do you recommend, if someone hasn't been to the Smart Garden ever, like me, this is my first time, yep. where do you recommend they start? Yeah. There's there's a couple of different places you can start. First of all, this is located on the very eastern, excuse me, western edge of RCTC's Hind Center. It's the western section of the campus, okay. and you can get to us off of Fourth Street and 19th Avenue Southeast. We're just across the street from Olmsted Medical Center's hospital, and this is a part of the RCTC campus. This garden was first designed, gosh, maybe 20 years ago by Andy Masterpol. He's a local landscape architect, and this was a part of the horticulture program before the horticulture program was shut down in 2021 here at RCTC and they're doing some shifting um, hopefully into some sustainable ag stuff which would be really great as that's picking up and we need more farmers on the land yes. but you know Andy has incorporated a lot of very classical elements here but also a lot of native plants and like you were talking about Salentia these these areas that are through so let's take a walk through Just the different walk, areas yeah. that sounds great and an alley is a classical architecture uh, piece of architecture that is is European in its in its beginnings and it's a long central kind of a promenade a walkway and we happen to have wisteria growing on this one which is really doing quite well here so don't be afraid to plant wisteria in this climate here <laughs> it will thrive if you get it in the right location and in California of course I'm sure you've seen a lot of I a have lot of wisteria. I have yes how has the climate affected the garden I know Minnesota's in a drought for a while I mean how does the this How do you guys area mean? particularly, we're down about six inches now of, of uh, rainfall. Of rain. just, just and even more so during the growing season, which is really oh. difficult because we had a really wet winter. 
you know, yeah, so. and spring was pretty wet, but we're actually now the um, the drought monitor is saying that we're still in extreme drought, especially Olmstead County and a couple of the counties below us. But Iowa and Minnesota are experiencing some of the worst drought areas in our nation. And then, of course, down in southern Texas and Louisiana along the coastline, they're, they've got it even worse than we do. But there's really not much moisture within the top 10 inches of the soil right now. So that's a concern for our trees, actually. It, yeah. Exactly. Now, here at the garden, is there any type of watering system put in place for drought? Uh, well, yes, there is a sprinkler system here, okay. but quite frankly, if we're talking about sustainable, um, you know, sustainable types of agriculture and horticulture, you wouldn't want to be using a sprinkler. Sprinklers are really not the best option for this climate. A lot of our soil is clay, and in a lot of our subdivisions, there's just very little topsoil on top, so people who use sprinklers tend to use them daily, and it keeps the moisture up at the top level of the soil, and they really need to switch to using their sprinkler only once a week for several hours yeah. to get it through to permeate. And so, yeah, sprinklers aren't really advised anymore. Yeah, we wow. don't really promote that because we, we're really trying to push natives and the native plants here, they're, they're a lot more used to this environment, more resilient than, than mm -hmm. some of the things people bring mm -hmm. in, right, from other climates or... I wonder if store. homeowners know that if they're growing these type of plants and they think it's a drought, I need to water, are they overwatering? Yeah. They don't need to water at all, really, depending on the plant itself. Well, depending upon what your landscape is like, but yeah, generally what's being suggested right now by, you know, like Xerxes, um, University of Minnesota Extension, uh, Minnesota Horticulture Society, um, a lot of the botanic gardens is stop, stop wasting water. Our, gra our grass is supposed to be brown this time of year. One of my colleagues said mums are hard to maintain for her. Do you have any recommendations for about mums? <laughs> um. Yeah, the problem with a lot of mums you buy is some of them just aren't hardy enough to, to survive here. Okay. And so I've had, yeah, of all the ones that I put in the ground, yeah, I have a very low. <laughs> okay, so it's not just her. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not just her, but also those are those are mass mass produced in greenhouses. So you have to be aware that this really really tight clump of an annual that's been produced with just minimal space around on a table in a greenhouse or in a protected growing environment. If, if they've missed eggs being laid by some sort of pathogen or something like that, and then it goes to the nursery and you purchase it and you don't notice that, two weeks later you're going to have a problem. So just check your plants really, really carefully. Most growers are on top of all of that thing and they do a great job, but sometimes you get something with a pathogen on it and then you bring it home and then you get sections of a chrysanthemum. Because they're so dense, you'll get a section that will die off or have an issue. Yep. And if anyone wants to become a master gardener, they can go to a website? Yeah, we yep. have a website. Or we have the um, Olmstead County Extension website that you can go to. Or we have a Facebook page. Okay. We have a lot of people on our Facebook page. So it's Olmstead County, U of M, Olmstead County Extension Master Gardeners. And, and don't forget about the University of Minnesota Extension yeah. website, right? Just, you know, Yard just type garden. in become a master gardener. The Yard and Garden line, that's really awesome. But yeah, just, just go, just type in Minnesota, Olmsted County Master Gardener, and you're going to get there and fill out your application by October 1st, and we'd love to have you. That's great. Thank you, guys. We'll have all that information on our website at kttc.com. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you. Thank you.